we're going to move on to the NBA right now. As we all know, Drew Holiday is a Boston Celtic. Damian Lillard is a Milwaukee Buck. What the you know what? How do the Drew Holiday, Damian Lillard trade change the way we view the NBA today? And Dino, the mic is yours. As a Boston Celtics guy, the way that this trade views the NBA today is that now we are the NBA title favorites, baby. You heard it here first. Come on. The best way to replace Marcus Smart is by getting a smarter Marcus Smart. We got Drew Holiday. He's better offensively, and he's just a great defender. He's a great two-way guard. We put him with Brown, Tatum, Porzingis, and Horford. We don't have the depth anymore, but guess what? We've had two big teams with a lot of depth. The 2018 Boston Celtics or 2019 Boston Celtics, Kyrie Hayward, Tatum, Brown, Horford, Morris. That team, so much depth, we didn't win. Last year's team, Brogdon, White. Tatum, Brown, Williams, Horford, Pritchard, all this depth, we don't win. We need to just cut down the, the on the depth and bring in the talent. Now we have the talent. We got Porzingis to stretch the floor more. We got Drew Holiday to keep our guard play top tier. Besides the Milwaukee Bucks, and which I think we beat them now that we got Drew Holiday, I don't see who's going to beat us besides ourselves. That's how I look at it. Does this make it the Eastern Conference a lot more lopsided? Absolutely. Because now I really I think outside of Boston and Milwaukee, you know, the Heat really didn't improve this offseason. The Cleveland neither did. The Knicks didn't. Like I don't see how the East is gonna go besides us or Milwaukee. One and two. Philly, man, forget that. I don't want to hear nothing about them no more. I mean, think about it. Who besides Boston and Milwaukee, who's gonna come out of the East? And no more shock eight seed upsets anymore. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> no, I, I like hey, Cleveland gonna be a sleeper. Um, but man, um, I, I like both of the, the moves. It's just losing Robert Williams for the Celtics for me is like really tough because he was he gets hurt all the time. But, but you're talking about Porzingis, another guy who gets hurt all the time. Isn't he already hurt? Nah, is he's he... in training camp, he's gone. Okay, but I know he was coming off an injury there, you know, playing for uh, his native country. So it's just you know. Basketball, 82 game season, it's the survival of the fittest who can last to the end. It's just, man, you give Giannis a dame, you know, a guy that can finish games, that can drop 40, 50 at any moment. Like, and now you have no, um, you know, Robert Williams. I know that uh, Horford gives him a hard time, but now he can play a little differently with Dame there because you got to respect Dame in the pick and roll game. And then, he went down and got some work with Dream, so let's see what his post game is going to look like. Um, so it, it's going to be scary, man. But clearly, those are the two best teams in the Eastern Conference. Then you have, you know, of course, um, you know, Philly, Cleveland, Miami. Um, I don't know why, you know, um, but I, it's hard for me to trust. I'm a Laker guy, so I'm not being too uh, much of a hater to you, uh, Dino, with your Boston Celtics. But it's just last year when it came to Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, how they curled up in the ball and played the way they did against Jimmy Butler, it just has me have have no trust in those guys that they're going to, you know, take it to that next level. I know they, they made the finals a couple of years ago, but that's because the Bucks were all injured. And now, you know, if you have Middleton there, you have Brooke Lopez, you have – uh, Dame over there. I like to pick up with Philly getting Kelly uh, Oubre. Tyrese Maxey is going to be a year better. Let's see. Most likely James Harden is going to get traded. Let's see to where and what type of pieces they get back. So I think Philly is still going to be dangerous. But for me, you got the modern day, shall I say, it might be disrespectful to say, but the modern day Kobe and Shaq with Dame and Giannis. So I, I just like them until somebody shows me something different. Those are the guys I'm going to trust to come out the East. But it don't matter anyway because the champion is coming from the Western Conference. It's going to be one of these teams, and it might just be that team here in Los Angeles called the Los Angeles Lakers because that team has depth. It has LeBron. It has AD. That's who we should be talking about the most because that team is scary. No, hang on. Hang on before I let Leo and Zay jump in. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Look. Okay. Us, yeah, we got Porzingis, and, yes, he gets hurt and whatnot. But yeah. the thing is, for us against the Bucks now is now we have the paint size. 
You got seven two Porzingis who could stretch the floor, shoot, and rebound. And then you have Horford in the paint, who is a known part of the Giannis wall where he makes it hard for Giannis just to drive all game. We got that paint size now. Because Robert Williams, as great as he was blocking shots in his athleticism, he's only a six eight center. Now you replace him with seven foot three Porzingis. Like who is out rebounding him and, and, and Horford in, in games like that? So I want to say that. And then I also want to say, are we forgetting about day to day Davis in the Western Conference? We ain't uh, forgetting about day to day Davis now, yeah. are we? Because when the going got tough against the Nuggets, I mean, Joker was unstoppable. And, you know, Denver's still there, even though they lost Bruce Brown. I think that and Jeff uh, Nuggets still pose a threat for short of the Lakers. And, you know, don't, don't rule out Phoenix. Phoenix got some death now, too. So the West is also – they got stronger as well. And, hey. you know, I, I would throw the Clippers in there, but, you know, is, is Kawhi going to play a game like – he, and he's he. I was there. Um, I was there earlier at the media day, and it looks like him and PG is ready to go. They've been working. AD has been working. I hope so. Crazy on yeah, his. Because that low management, that joint got to go. And obviously, okay. the NBA is yeah. trying to tackle that with the rules that they made. But I'll give you my take here. When you okay. talk about you know the ripple effects and how I view the NBA today, there's a couple. I'm gonna start off with one, and then let Zay get in here. Then the other, I could you know go forward with. But I think when you talk about the Damian Lillard trade to Milwaukee and the Drew Holiday trade to the Boston Celtics, it exposes the Miami Heat for the lack of aggression over the summer and adding to the roster. And it also exposes and it puts to the forefront Philly and how they handle the James Harden situation. So right now on paper, you look at it and you look at the Eastern Conference, the two top teams to me that are the favorites to win it all is obviously Milwaukee and Boston, mm-hmm. one and two. I think Boston number one, and then I'll go Milwaukee number two, and that's it. But obviously it's a long season. Injuries could happen. You know, chemistry has to be formed. It's 82 games, whatever. A lot of things could happen. That could change. But right now on paper, it has to be those two teams. And anybody saying any other team is just trying to be the difference of opinion. It has to be. Well, I want to hear nothing about Philly. Season. This stuff needs to end for real. Like, I've been saying this yeah. for years. Like, this Philly and stuff and with Miami, you have to realize that last year they were literally a quarter away from going home in the playing game and not making the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And you have to attribute that run that they went on, that magical March Madness-like run based off shooting that really is unsustainable. They were shooting the bricks off the three-point line. I mean, in a good way. They were making their shots. Also, Jimmy Butler went crazy, went heroic against the Bucks. In the first series, that's how they got past the Bucks, along with the injuries that you alluded to, Mikel, and that's how they got that far. So realistically, you lost two starters on your roster to free agency. You didn't add, you didn't bolster, and there were little moves that you could have made, like Christian Wood, to try to bolster your front court, and you didn't, thinking you was all in, you was going to get Dane. Like, that ego of Pat Riley got to go, because it cost them a lot here, because they really made it seem like it was them outbidding them for Dane. It didn't happen. So um, you look at that and how they lost and they didn't add. They're not going to be a, a team that they once were last year. Like Jimmy Butler, they do get far. Jimmy Butler is going to flame out. We see it time and time again. They flame out and they, you know, run out of gas. Now with the 76ers, how they handle the James Harden situation is now to the forefront. Because like Giannis and B talked about how unhappy, not unhappy, but how he wanted to win a championship. Now, how are you going to handle this situation? Because Dame didn't get his way, right? I have no reason to believe that Harden is going to get his way because he lost all leverage here. He's no longer a star player to that magnitude where he can dictate his future because, A, of his behavior when he goes to different teams and they're requesting trades, and, B, he doesn't show up in big, high-quality playoff moments, so his market is diminished. How do you figure that out, right? With and B, there you trying to please him. You know, it's his way or the highway with James Harden. We know that for a fact. So maybe he do got some leverage in the sense that he's just not going to bother. Like, he's just not going to show up. And he's going to show up overweight. So how they handle that and how they try to get better in the Eastern Conference where the Bucks just added Dame and firepower in a closer and Drew Holiday is a missing piece for Boston, we have to see Y'all are gonna love my take because both the Milwaukee Bucks and Boston Celtics did not get better. They just got bigger names. That's all they did. When you look at the Boston Celtics, they sacrificed their rebounding, they sacrificed their interior defense 
to get Drew Holiday, a perimeter player, a point guard, and which they were looking to get for quite some time. I still feel like they should have got Tyus Jones, but they got Drew Holiday. Great pickup, great addition. Are you expecting for the Boston Celtics to play each starter 45 minutes? Who's coming off the bench? Al Horford? Great. Who else? Sam Hauser? All right, who else? Peyton Pritchard? That's not an NBA championship-level team. You need a team that's going to have a bunch of hustle players coming off the bench, not all your best defensive players, all your best hustle players in that starting five. You know, I'm not expecting Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum to play 82 games. I can't tell you the last time Porzingis has seen 80 games in a season. You can't expect that from him. Grant Williams was arguably their best um, all-around player in terms of hustle, shooting threes, getting to the defend the best player on the opposing team, getting him gritty. And they left him. They removed him. Grant Marcus Williams. Smart, defensive player of the year, removed him. So we have to expect this Boston Celtics team to still play at a high-caliber defense with guys who are injury-prone on their starting lineup. Drew Holiday is another guy. He doesn't play 82 games. Last year, he played 59, I believe. So you have to anticipate when guys go down, who's replacing them? Who's coming in to replace that kind of production? And we don't know yet because I think they also traded Malcolm Brogdon. So now is Payne Pritchard a guy who requested a trade last year going to come off the bench happily? We don't know. And then the Milwaukee Bucks, same thing. They're quite. got Dame Lillard, a sharpshooter, a great scorer. Who's going to play perimeter defense on that team? Because they got rid of him. They got rid of Grace of Allen. So now you got Chris Middleton out there by himself playing perimeter defense. Giannis Antetokounmpo is not a good perimeter defender. He got exposed multiple times when he plays against KD. He plays against Jason Tatum. He plays against a bunch of guys who shoot, you know, that live at that three-point line. He gets embarrassed every single time. He's not a great perimeter defender. So now these two teams are susceptible to getting punished by teams like the Cavaliers, who added a bunch of shooters, who still got Evan Mobley and Jared Allen in that paint, who still got Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland at guards. And also, let's not forget the gritty team of the New York Knicks, who have shown us time and time and time again that they out-hustle their opponents every game. They're a team that doesn't matter who's in front of them. It don't matter if they play the Celtics. They play the um, Sixers. They play the Cavs. They're going to out-hustle you, and they're going to get gritty in your jersey for 48 minutes. That's not something teams are accustomed to. They're not comfortable with it being touched for 48 minutes and being physical for the entire game. They're, they're, this is a finesse league. This league is about finesse. And that's why when we look at this trade, we're seeing that fans love the big names. They love big names going to play with the bigger talent. But we see that the role players, the guys who play 100% Man. hustle all the time are the ones that win the championships. We've just seen yeah. the Denver Nuggets with um, Christian Braun and Bruce Brown, the unsung heroes of that Denver Nuggets championship. Despite right, the, right, know, right, right. Like that. Zane, so Zane, you got to I have a dream, dream speech going on. I, I got to get in here because <laughs> that's it. Respect, I, mean, I, I see where he's coming from when talking about the depth and the grit, the guys with grit and all that that uh-huh. come and contribute to a team winning the championship. But who were the closest? Who were they going to in the fourth quarter? Jokic and Jamal Murray, mm-hmm. right? So at the end of the day, when you talk about your statement and how you just laid that out, they just added bigger names. They didn't get better. Okay, fine. They were the number one in two seeds last year. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, Which they still the NBA top finals? two seeds. What you say? Which one went to the NBA Finals? I'm, talk, I'm talking about the at the playoffs. But the playoffs started, the playoff yeah. bracket, it was Milwaukee number one. And um, Boston number two. I'm saying which right? one went to the, the regular season. But the Heat, the Heat, are, obviously, the heat, are doing that, the heat ain't doing that okay? again. And the Heat ain't doing that again. They ain't doing that much, man. Okay? Ankle. And it got worse at the end of the day. Well, but so that's a, you got it. Well, quickly, and I'm almost done. When you talk about the Bucks, let's start off with them. Like, I think Boston really got better in the sense that they plug in a hole. Right? Like, Milwaukee, they could have did without the Dame trade if they wanted to. Right? Boston got what they needed. They needed a playmaker. Now, although they sacrificed Marcus Smart, and I understand the grit that he brings in the defense and all that, they still fill half of that void. If not, oh, like, this guy could go to the backcourt. So he can go to Dame. Like, literally, you got Dame. Okay, I could go. I got a man that could go Dame right now, today. So, and he could play me. Brown on him, too. You got two. Exactly. And then got Derek court. Wright as well off the bench. So they can go at the backcourt. When you talk about the Bucks. Yeah, they lost Drew Holiday, and it's not really a year. Yeah, it's a loss defensively, but they got a closer, a guy that in the fourth quarter, you're not dependent on these other guys like Chris Middleton to knock down a four-quarter shot because Giannis ain't going to knock that down. Mm -hmm. So when you try to stop him in the interior and you got him on the exterior, Dane, he can shoot it, and he can make you. How many times we sent him? We saw him send guys home in the playoffs in game seven. You got that guy. So at the end of the day, what both of these teams did was sacrifice something that they had 
to try to get better in something that they didn't have. And that's why I still think they're the two best teams in the East to me. And the thing is, too, is with the depth thing is like, I understand Zay's point. Like you do need like the Bruce Browns and the Christian Browns. Like you need those guys for a good run. However, this isn't the NFL. You know, if it's a very long season and what really matters is the playoffs. Like we know we're both going to Milwaukee and Boston are both going to get to the playoffs. The thing is what happens in the playoffs and what happens as the season goes on. Because now think about the buyout market and the rental players we can get to plug in those holes that we need as the season goes on. So it's very attainable for us to fix these holes. If we're just trying to find role players and bench players, maybe at the trade deadline as a rental, that's a lot easier than finding like a Drew Holiday that we got lucky that fell into our lap because the depth isn't as much of a necessity as we say it is in the playoffs because in reality in the playoffs, there's like seven, eight guys touching the court. And yeah, think too, you know, real, one more point. One more point yeah. that I'm, I'm going to shut the hell up. One more point. Because I'm going to keep it a bean, right? I don't really, like, follow college basketball like that. I never knew who Christian Brown was before the finals. Like, you can get guys to step up. Sometimes you can find those dominant erupts. Miami has some guys that they rejuvenated their career on the path of getting to a championship. That's why they got there, too, where you got guys like Caleb Martin who rejuvenated his career. So you can always find Diamond in the whoops. I never heard of Christian Brown before the playoffs and before the fight. He was nice. Kansas, he was nice. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You follow college yeah. basketball. I don't. Yeah. So. Kansas, he was nice. But when it comes to Boston, the only thing I'm scared of is that Marcus Smart and Robert Williams were two of the dogs on that roster. You know, they brought a lot of that toughness. That yeah, Grant grit, Williams. That, that, yeah, like, we're, like they were the, the leaders of, of that end. We know that Tatum isn't that guy. We know that Brown isn't that guy. Who is going to be the vocal leader? Drew Holiday isn't a vocal guy. Uh, Porzingis isn't a vocal guy. So who's going to be that vocal guy that's going to be willing to get into to Tatum and Brown when they ain't playing, you know, when guys aren't playing as tough as they should be? Um, and I think that they're really going to miss that because in the playoffs, you match up against a Giannis, you're going to need some gritty guys that's willing to, you know, talk some mess and to get into people's faces and even with Marcus Smart and Robert Williams, that was their issue against uh, Miami is, yet, is that it was like, dang, the, the big bad wolf and Jimmy Butler could just step over who anybody. Now they don't have anybody that's vocal and tough like that. So it's, it's going to be very interesting. I think the East is more wide open than people think. I know right now we want to say these two teams, but I think if like if Philly can make the right trade for James Harden, get the right pieces and – Tyrese Maxey can make that next step. He can be like that that Jamal Murray, you know, take that type of step, uh, you know, and be, be who he is because they took Boston to what, seven games? And James but Embiid is that. soft. He's not like yeah. that. We see yeah, it time but, and time again. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was, it was about Boston. It was more about play. Boston. Philly, it was yeah, more. Of course, Embiid and Harden, they both folded in game seven. I knew they were going yeah. to. They had like exactly. 13 we knew that nine, respectively. But Harden but like, looked like he quit. Harden looked like, like bro. But so did Embiid. They're not giving me the, the shots. Like game one, it was looking like, whoa, if this Harden plays with the healthy Embiid, they can beat anybody. Sure. Then once the B comes back, the dude is playing like, man, I want to be the number one guy. So a guy like that, you don't really run on your team, you know. So if if Tyrese Maxey can step up, um, you know, and the, the added pieces that the few the pieces they added, and they can get the right pieces within the trade. Say if he does go to the Clippers, you get a Terrence Mann, you get a Marcus Morris, you know, which gives them a lot more depth. Uh, two guys that can uh, play defense, that can knock down shots. It'll come down to. Uh, Embiid and Maxi, but like we talked about with Denver, what helped them win the championship to beat the Lakers wasn't just that those two guys played well, because to me, I think it was a draw between AD and Jokic. The difference was their wing players clearly outplayed the Lakers, and that was also the difference in the finals. Bruce Brown stepped up. Uh, Brown stepped up. Um, you had uh, MPK was knocking down shots. Jeff Green played some good basketball. KCP so if you can just build the right pieces around a maxi and then beat, it will give them a chance. But it, it's going to be interesting. It, it's hard to say right now. On paper, you see Dame, who just averaged 30 points mm -hmm. a game with the Giannis and Middleton. That's who you have to pick. But I'm telling you, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody else represented the East in the finals other than those two teams. Lil, it's on your, it's on your wall, Lil. Look back listen. there, man. You know what it is. Right, listen, I want to go there. 
but I got to be realistic too. Not we are not winning the championship with Julius Randle as the number two, respectfully. <laughs> it's just not happening. So I got to be realistic. I'm not like you, Zay. All right, I don't fake the funk. I, I, I call a spade a spade. It's in my name. It's the real lip. Now I get it. You good vibes. You want to have a good vibe. The party is every day for you. But me, I'm real. Okay, that's the difference in our names. But let me tell you one thing, right? And this is it. When you talk about Boston, and I'm done here in particular with Boston, like obviously you can make the argument the biggest loss for them is really Ime Udoka. Yeah. Like the way how they played under his tutelage, especially defensively, putting defense as the number one instead of the three-point shooting and the scoring. When they lost that guy, they kind of lost something. They lost an identity there. And um, Joe Mazzulla is this offensive guy who's trying to jack up threes and all that. That was the biggest loss. As far as Marcus Smart is concerned, I'm not saying that's not a loss. Anytime you have a guy that really drives the crowd and have those gritty plays and is able to take fouls and all that with no fear, that's a loss. But it's up to the maturity of Tatum and Brown to be those vocal leaders. At the end of the day, y'all been going to the playoffs, making the finals. Y'all played in the finals already. You should be baptized and experienced and able to, you know, you know, look at each other and be like, you know what? We're going to lead this team and not your turn, my turn. Should I do this? Should I stay in my lane? We had a whole lot of that. Like with Marcus Smart, there was a lot of people thinking that he wasn't in his lane. So when he did try to be aggressive and talk at it, sometimes he was overstepping his boundaries. I could tell that. I'm a good energy reader. So at the end of the day, he's not out of the picture, right? So there's no overstepping boundaries there. Tatum and Brown being the two scorers, the top two scorers on this team, got to do it. And we'll see if they do. And for three hundred million, they need to. It's time to step yeah. up. Yeah, I agree. You're making that. all that money for. They're yeah, both, yeah. both going to make three hundred million dollars over the next five years. Hey, it's hey, time hey, for hey. them to step up and be the leaders that they need to be. Because, and that answers Mikel's statement before earlier too. Because he said the same thing. Like without Smart and uh, Williams, who are going to be the dogs? It has to be Tatum and Brown for that much money. You better be. Yeah. The, the dogs are not expensive. That's why they don't. They don't. That's why they're not dogs. The dogs are the cheap one. Dogs are the ones you like. The Montrez Harrells, the um, what's his name, Morris. Deontay Jones, the guys who get paid minimum wage, but then they oh, at the end of the day they in everybody's face. They willing to get those fines. Tatum and Brown, you you're looking for Brown to be explosive. You're looking for Brown to be the star. You're looking for Brown to be rather the star next to Tatum or to shine above Tatum because that's what you're looking for when you're paying Brown th- damn near sixty million a year. And then you have to – it's ridiculous how much money they're paying these guys. J- Drew Holiday's due $37 million this year. They just gave Christoph Porzingis $30 million a year. Oh, like, w- like, at what point do you feel like the bench is going to become a factor in the team? Because I haven't seen yet in the NBA a moment in time where a starting five is getting paid all that money playing 45 minutes a game each win an NBA championship. Not ever. You need depth. You need guys who are dogs and gritty to come and fill out the roster to get the locker room in check when they're messing things up. If Tatum and Brown are your dogs, I am worried because those are the two guys who make the most mistakes and, and they are honest, the ones pointing fingers. And to be honest, honest, you look, but he made a lot of mistakes as well with stupid turnovers late in the game. And, and, and guess what? I could literally flip what you just said. When Joel Embiid is your number one, you have an issue on a championship level team. He's a number two. When you have James Harden, who's known to not show up in game sixes and sevens, you have an issue. When you have Donovan Mitchell, who's known to not show up in playoffs, you have an issue. When you have the Knicks, my team, I love y'all, and I think we're going to make the Eastern Conference Finals this year. But when we're not making shots and we don't have a guy to go to in the fourth quarter, we have an issue. It's give and take. Shaq Shaq always always says it. It comes down to those others and Mm-hmm. Man, the Celtics might not have the depth to have those others. As much as everybody want to give Jokic all the praise and, you know, even some that give Jamal Murray, it was them other guys that stood mm-hmm. out. That's the reason why Miami even made that run. It wasn't, you know, Jimmy was went nuclear, of course. Yeah, in that first series. If it wasn't yeah. for that, they wouldn't even got that far. Yeah, yeah. Well, if it wasn't for a Tatum was, sprained ankle in game seven, neither would they. But anyways. Oh, oh my gosh. But it, it was all of the other guys that mm-hmm. stepped up. So it's I mean, not, up not even only that. The Knicks didn't make, we didn't make our shots. If we knocked down our shots, we win that series. Okay. Uh, the same thing with, with on Boston. If Boston knocked down their shots, they got a lot of open three-pointers. They did not make them. If the and Knicks and Boston made their shots, 
They would have won. Philly, Philly should have eliminated Boston. They they had two oh. games to do so. They came up short because James so Harden. If Boston, if they would have made their shots, they would have, you know. That's, yeah, James yeah, but Harden the thing is, is, we know Philly's soft. They're not like that. Embiid and Harden are not like and that. So when we, we first game seven, I was like, we got it. It's over. I knew Embiid wasn't going to show up. And Harden, where are they at? They do it every year. And here comes Patrick to do with them They're soft. If, if Patrick Beverly is going to be there trying to press lines, represent Chicago, he's trying to go crazy. <laughs> but it, it's going to be – Hey, it's going to be some real good basketball, man. That's why I'm so excited that the NBA season is here because mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot of great hoops. Like, of course, we want to put certain teams at the top, man, but it's going to be some teams that's going to surprise some people, and I can't wait. Like, Cleveland, I'm really looking at. Um, it's so crazy, so much going on in the NBA that we're not even really talking about Phoenix. And Phoenix, with the trade, yeah. they were able to add some pieces and some depth to go with their – a uh, big three, so it, it's gonna be some great basketball. I cannot wait, baby. Uh, this is start this week. I mean, even Portland, Portland did a good job to me. Like, I thought they did win. a very good they job of win. being able to flex their assets and being patient. Like, Joe Cronin, who was a GM of that team, his patience definitely paid dividends because he could have been boxed into Miami and Miami or bust. Nah, he was patient, allowed the market to open up, and he got the best deals for. You know, Dane, hey. which resulted in the Drew Holiday deal, which resulted in some good plays and young plays and picks. You Can know, you say the- props to the Portland front office? Because, yeah. you know, this whole Dame in Miami thing was not – I feel I knew Miami wasn't going to get when they would – I kept saying things about stalemates. Like, props to Portland just for being like, yo, like, I got a business to run. Like, right. you requested a trade. Guess what? You signed a contract. Don't sign the yeah. contract then. <laughs> you know what I'm and, saying? Like, yeah. props to and, Portland for doing good business. Shout out to and, Portland because they, they learned from – uh, you guys is Knicks and the Nuggets that we're not going to force a trade to a team that you say you want to go to. We really going to go get the best deal that we can get that's going to help us. And, of course, they're in a much better uh, position because they have Scoot Henderson. They got uh, Anthony Simons and, you know, all of the young talent over there. I really like what Portland was able to do. But I, I, I'm so happy because I'm tired of players trying to dictate where they go like you said, uh, Dino, you signed a contract. Nobody told Dane. I know your contract. You yep. A couple years ago, you could have went to any team as a free agent that you wanted to, but because you were like, "Hey, I want to be loyal, loyal," and take the money. It wasn't even to me. Yeah. Some of these things are not even about loyalty. It's yeah, mass it's to make it believe it's about loyalty. Some yeah, of this is taking bad. the money and and leaving. All right, let me secure the bag first, yeah, and then leave with it. That's what James Harden didn't do. His fool self. OK, yeah. in Brooklyn, they offered him two hundred million dollars in Brooklyn. He didn't take the money. He left and now he can't get the money. And now he's trying to blow a gasket at freaking uh, Maury for not giving him the money. But you're dumb behind should have took the money in Brooklyn and then left. Maury said, I saw a game seven versus Boston. I, why, why do you think I want to? And all the other ones throughout yeah. the years. <laughs> yeah. So it it doesn't make any sense. And that I'm just kind of happy that these teams are getting control because. It, it's getting out. It's a LeBron era. It's getting out of hand where these players yeah. thinking that they they're bigger than the brands. Like you're not worth a billion dollars. These teams are, you mm-hmm. know. So I'm happy that Portland. I'm hoping Philly, you know, hold tight and do what's best for their team, so that teams can know going forward. Hey, if once you sign this deal, uh, you know, I hate for it to sound this way, but you belong to us, you know. So. Yeah. And there's Thank no you. such thing as a friendly trade request. That Dame try to paint that picture out there. How about no, I rescind yeah, the no, trade? No. Because the yeah. Miami is not going to go down. I will rescind the trade. I come back. No, you ain't coming back. You're going to be a buck. Okay? And we'll leave it at that. Please like and subscribe for all the up-to-date content. We're, we, you've been slinging shows left and right. Slinging content left and right. Please don't miss anything. If you do, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Or leave a question. Something you may want to answer. Something you may have. It's, all ideas are great ideas. Nothing's a dumb question.